Understanding like terms is really essential for us when we're trying to combine terms together with one another. So really we only concern ourselves with like terms um, when we are combining like terms. And so by combine, really what we refer to by combining is really we're just kind of adding terms together and subtracting, I guess. But remember that subtracting is just adding an opposite. Um, so whenever we're dealing with adding, we can also deal with subtracting um, just by using that definition of subtraction. Um, so what like terms are, are going to have um, these following characteristics. So there needs to be the same variable or variables involved exactly. And then second of all, there needs to be the same exact exponent or exponents of the variables involved for us to be able to combine like terms. And I'll explain exactly um, why and how that's going to um, play out. But basically, um, what that means in an example expression that you see right here is that this guy and this guy right here, they are going to be like terms. We can identify them as such because they have the same variable or variables, in this case, x. Um, but also the same exponent or exponents on the variables, which in this case they both have twos as exponents. Um, similarly, this term, the positive 6y to the third z, and then the negative 2y to the third z are also like terms. They have the same variables y and z, um, but then the y's have the same powers of 3 and the z's have the same powers of 1's. So, um, it's important that you understand that these would not be like terms. So if you had, let's say, 6x squared y and 6xy squared, because um, although they have the same variables involved, the exponents don't correspond to the same variables, and so those are not going to be like terms that we can use to simplify expressions. Okay. All right, so to simplify an expression, of course, you know, means to make something um, simpler. But ultimately, the result that you get when you make it simpler is still going to be the same value of what you had before when it was a little bit less simple, right? And so when we come up with an expression that is in its simplified form, note that the expression and its simplified form are equivalent, and equivalent means that they are going to be equal in value. So um, nothing's really changed in terms of what they're worth, it's just that we've made things simpler, okay? So um, this says to combine the like terms. Combine really means to add or subtract stuff together. Um, and these do end up being like terms um, because they have the same variable x involved and then the same exponents of one involved. So um, I think you have enough experience to know what the answer to this is. Um, the reason why I start off with this though is I want us to understand why the answer is 8x because in order for us to really be able to do algebra and math, we have to be able to use properties that we know are true, and that's where I want to take this. So yes, the answer to this is going to be 8x, and the reason why this is is like, if you had three eights, and then you um, were to add together five eights, right? Ultimately, that doesn't mean you're going to have eight eights. And maybe eight wasn't the best number to use because then we'd get a lot of eights there. So um, if I picked a different number, like if you had three sevens and five sevens, right? This means seven plus seven plus seven, and then seven plus seven plus seven plus seven plus seven. That does mean you're going to have eight sevens, right? So we could generalize that to say, yeah, okay, that is three x plus five x. Um, so then we're going to have eight x's, right? So the reason how this is going to work is you can kind of think of it like this. Notice that that has to be true. And what I basically kind of did there is I recognized that if I did distribute the x to there and the x to there, right, like you would get x times 3 plus x times 5, but then you can use community commutativity of multiplication to get 3x and 5x out of that. So it's just kind of using the distributive property, but backwards, I guess, to write it of the form x times 3 plus 5. 
Um, and then from there, we know that 3 plus 5 is going to equal 8, and that's kind of because of closure of addition in the real numbers. And then if we have x times 8, we know by the commutativity of multiplication that that's the same thing as 8x, right? So just kind of using some commutativity and the distributive property, that's how we're able to actually combine um, like terms as you're seeing there. All right, so this has to simplify the expression. Um, now you're gonna notice that like, for example, this guy and this guy right here are like terms, but really for us to be able to combine like terms together, we need them to kind of be right next to each other and not separated by other terms. So it just turns out that like, um, you know, because of commutativity of addition, we can kind of switch the order of terms and all that sort of stuff. So we would be able to rewrite this expression as like a 7x squared plus a negative 4x squared plus 3y squared plus 2y squared. And then when you've got those terms next to each other, then we can combine them. So since they're both x squared terms, we really can just add the coefficients of 7 and negative 4, which is positive 3. So you end up getting 3x squared then. And then we also have like terms with these fellows right here. Um, positive 3 plus positive 2 is positive 5. And then we can add plus 5y squared. Um, so then we're done and we can't simplify right there because when you've got different variables, um, x and y, we can't necessarily combine those together because, I don't know, like if x equaled 5 but then y equaled 4, then your expression would be 3, um, 5 squared, which is 3 25ths, and then plus 5 y squared, which is um, 16. And so, yeah, if you add 3 25s with 5 16s, like, you've got different numbers there, 25s and 16, so, you know, counting them doesn't kind of line up. So that means that, yeah, what we had right there is simplest. Um, in kind of a similar manner, so um, we're just adding and subtracting a bunch of stuff. So 5 plus 7 would be 12, and those are the only terms um, that are x squared terms that we'd be able to combine together. And then you'll also see that we have a couple of these terms, a positive 2 and a negative 8, which would add to be a negative 6x, so minus 6x. And then finally, there's just one constant term. Remember that just the number is just called a constant, and then minus 1. And it turns out that this would be the simplest way that we can write this expression. Now, a few things that I need to note that you need to understand about this. So, first of all, I wrote it so that the highest exponent term was at the beginning, so like the leader of this expression. And then there was the exponent of 1 on that x there, and then the constant was at the very end. Um, so we often do that with expressions, that we write the highest exponents um, at the far left of the expression and then we decrease um, in terms of exponent order from there. That's called standard form of an algebraic expression and we'll kind of get more into that um, later on but it's going to be something that we're going to be utilizing all the time. Um, the second thing that I want to note about this is that you cannot combine together like these terms when the x's have different variables involved because I don't know like if x were let's say 3 then that would mean you would have 12 3 squareds, because it's x squared, so you have 12 9s, and then minus 6 x's, which is 6 3's, and so you can't combine them together when you're counting 9's and you're counting 3's, because they're not the same numbers as each other. So that's why we can't combine together um, variable terms that have different exponents, because, um, yeah, you wouldn't get equal valued expressions all the time. All right, so here, um, to simplify this expression, you want to have separate um, terms. And so since we've got like things kind of locked in parentheses or that sort of thing, we're going to want to unlock that. So in other words, um, there is some distribution like that can definitely happen right there. It's just a negative 1 times things. So you'd end up getting negative 3j. Be careful right there because it's a negative times a negative, so you end up getting a plus m. And then plus, and then that 5 is timesing with the parentheses quantities, so that 5 can distribute, so we end up getting plus 5j, and then 5 times a negative 7 is minus 35m. So now we just has, have a series of addition and subtraction. We'll want to identify if there's any like terms. So right there, you do have terms that have j's with powers of 1, so you can combine together negative 3 with 5 to give you 2j. 
and then you've also got 1m and negative 35m. 1 minus 35 is negative 34. And then that would be the simplest possible expression because j and m are different variables, therefore not like terms, so we can't combine them together. Um, this one here, just have to be careful. Um, it might seem like you might want to distribute, but you, you can't distribute the 15 right there because the 15 is not timesing with the parentheses quantity, right? You're actually subtracting the parentheses quantity. So if I rewrite this using the definition of subtraction, so instead of subtracting, we can think of that this is adding the opposite, which would be a negative one. So now you actually have basically kind of a negative distributing to the parentheses, right? So you would just have minus two n and then minus six from the 15. So you just get a three term expression that you see right there. There's gonna be um, these numbers or these constants that you're gonna be able to combine. So if you did a 15 combined with a negative six, it's gonna be a positive nine. So you end up getting a negative two n plus nine is the simplest possible form of that expression. And then right here, um, kind of one big thing that I wanted to highlight in this particular example is that at the beginning of this, um, be very, 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 very careful um, because you cannot subtract the 8 and the 5 together there because you've got this subtraction operation. But we can't do any subtracting yet because we've got to follow the order of operations whenever we're simplifying and evaluating expressions. So like this operation of multiplication, this distribution has to take precedence first. So if there is a negative in front of that, you can distribute the negative with the 5, and I think that makes things a lot nicer. So then if you distribute the negative 5 with everything, then you'll end up getting 8 minus 5c minus 5d squared, okay? And then you also have the 1 fourth that's going to distribute to the um, next parenthesis grouping. So if you did 1 fourth times negative 2, you can think of that as 1 fourth times negative 2. You can turn the negative 2 into a fraction, and then you can have negative 2 over 4, of course. But that's going to reduce to negative 1 half. So it'll be minus 1 half c squared. And then 1 fourth times 8, it ends up being 2, since that's a quarter of 8. Um, so plus 2d squared. So we end up getting this five term expression and then um, you've got a d squared term and another d squared term. Um, and then you also have a c squared term, but no other c squared term. You have a c term and then an eight. So it turns out that the things that I underlined in blue are gonna be the only like terms. So if I combine together those blue terms, then you're going to have um, negative three d squared. And then I'll kind of write this in standard form where the exponents are going to decrease. So there's another exponent that's of power 2, so I'll put that term next. And then I'll put the c term, and then finally the positive 8 kind of at the end to get that into a standard form. All right, so um, with this guy right here, um, it does look like you've got some like terms because like this is a g squared term. Now it's just divided by five. So if you think about that, like if you take g squared and you divide it up into five equal parts, like that's the same thing as one fifth g squared, of course, right? And then, well, I guess this would be one fifth as well, but it's one fifth of g, which is different. Um, and then this is three tenths of g squared and then minus one fourth of g. So you can think of it like this. Um, so now, because these g squareds are like terms, you're gonna need to combine them together. Now, it's just that they're fractions, right? So, it, I mean, if it was like two g squared plus eight g squared, like you know it would be 10 g squared. So that just means that we need to figure out, in this case, what is one fifth plus three tenths? So if you wanted to figure out one fifth plus three tenths, well, to add fractions, you need a common denominator, of course, right? So our common denominator of um, uh, would have to be of 10, since that's the least common multiple of five and 10. So you can multiply this fraction by two over two. That's gonna give you then two tenths plus three tenths, which is five tenths, but five tenths reduces to one half. So those two blue terms are gonna combine together to become one half G squared. 
And then right here, this G term and this G term can be combined together. You've got a one fifth that needs to add with a negative one fourth there. So you have to figure out how to do one fifth minus one fourth. Of course, when you're subtracting, you need a common denominator. The least common multiple of five and four is 20. So you can multiply this one by four over four to get a denominator of 20 and this one by five over five. So you end up getting four over 20 minus five over 20 and that's gonna be negative one over 20 then. So then that green term will end up being minus 1 20th G. And then this right here is gonna be the simplest form of that particular expression. And then one last example of simplifying here is this one. It's kind of similar to one we saw earlier where there's some distribution that can happen. Um, now when you have multiple different things um, multiplying there in front, you will distribute both the two and the V, not just the V. So the two V will distribute to the W to give you two times V times W, and then the two V times the negative four to give you minus eight V, because you have two times four there. And then the W would distribute to the four to give you four W. Um, w times four, right, is four W because of commutativity of uh, multiplication, and then minus W V. So when you take a look at these um, right here, it does turn out that this right here and this right here are like terms with one another because we know that VW and WV, they're actually equal to each other because um, of commutativity of addition that I've illustrated up there. So because we can combine those like terms together, it's just like two plus negative one, which is positive one, I guess. So you end up getting one VW. But then the other terms, this is a V term right here, and then um, I guess I should use a different color. There we go, that's a V term right there, and then a W term right there, which are different variables. So those will just remain as they are. So minus eight V plus four W, and then that would be the final result that's fully simplified.